Hi guys, I'm making a video here uh, by request, like much of my videos are. Um, this one specifically, I had gotten a couple of requests for uh, how to know the blood flow of the heart or what is the blood flow through the heart. Um, now this is a pretty, I would say basic kind of concept that we really wanna make sure that we understand clearly. So for those of you in nursing school, this is probably something that's gonna be presented to you initially in anatomy and physiology. And we kind of tend to like poo-poo the things that we learn in A and P. Oh, it's not nursing. It's not, you know, my core classes. But truly, we really shouldn't do that because some of those things that we learn, a lot of those things that we learn, we really need to carry over with us when we start to build more, you know, critical concepts and more complicated and complex concepts. So for instance, when you're in med surge and you start to learn about things like congestive heart failure, um, when you're in pediatrics and you start to learn about all the congenital heart defects, it is really, really important and pretty critical that we understand not just the anatomy of the heart, but the blood flow through the heart, because that can really help us to get a good grip on what's happening in things like CHF, um, whether it's right-sided, left-sided heart failure or both, what's happening when we talk about these ASDs or VSDs, you know, what's going on in the heart. So understanding the blood flow is something that is pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but very important. So if you're not in your core classes yet for the nursing students and you're in A&P, pay attention, remember these things, practice it forever. So what I did is I drew a heart. I'm definitely not an artist. You know this. Our heart does not look like a Valentine's heart, but I could not help myself because Valentine's Day is so close. Um, so I just drew it like this. But what's going to be important is that we know the flow of blood through the heart. And um, we remember that. Commit it to memory. And again, just going to take some practice. So first, let's look at the structures to make sure that we remember what we're talking about. And I'll use some abbreviations here. Of course, because it's a video, we can always just rewind it, right, and go back. So this here would be our superior vena cava, which I'm going to make SVC. And this is going to be our inferior vena cava. Now, for any of you that have uh, A&P books from school, even med surge books or pediatric books, there is um, the human heart, the anatomy of the human heart in those books repeated through a lot of pages. So, you know, always reference that. So we have our superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Let's finish labeling all these things. This is going to be our right atrium. This is going to then be our right ventricle. So this would be our left atrium, left side of the heart, left ventricle. And then these guys are um, our, our valves that we have here. I kind of like to think of them as like hallways, if you will. This is going to be, I'll put it here, little arrow so we know we're talking about this. This is going to be our tricuspid. So I'll put T-R-I, tricuspid. And this one here is going to then be our mitral. Or this could be called our bicuspid. So where does that term come from? I get that question sometimes. So tricuspid, meaning three cusps, are because of the three leaflets that are in this valve. So that's why I drew three here, just to kind of get a visual on this. And then of course, then the bicuspid would mean that there are just two. Now shooting off or coming out of our right ventricle here is gonna be our pulmonary valve. And think of the valve kind of like the door. So here's our pulmonary valve, that would be the valve. And this is actually our pulmonary artery. And pulmonary artery, we should be thinking pulmonary, right, lungs. It does exactly what you think. This goes to the lungs. So let's say here's a lung here, and here's a lung here. So that's gonna carry blood to both of our lungs. And then this here, this is our gonna be our aortic valve, like that door, and this is gonna be our aorta. So I'll put a big A there, so we know that's our aorta. Now I'm missing one structure here, and I'm going to draw that in back here, a little small, Let's see here. And this guy, this is our pulmonary veins. So this is what's going to bring the blood back from the lungs into the heart, okay? So first things first, knowing our structures where everything is. So how does the flow go? How does that work? So let's delete these because now we have the names. So if we're going from start to finish, blood is going to enter into the right atrium through the inferior and superior vena cava. So it's this guy 
and this guy. So that's our inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium. From there, the blood is gonna travel through the tricuspid valve, and it's gonna end up here in the right ventricle. Then from the right ventricle, it's gonna travel through the pulmonic valve or the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary artery, out to the lungs, both of them, because we should have two, right? Our right and our left lungs. Now, when the blood gets to the lungs, it's going to pick up oxygen, right? That's the purpose of the blood going to the lungs, to pick up oxygen, because the blood on the right side of the heart is poorly oxygenated blood. This is blood that's coming back to the heart from the body. So think of it in the sense that this blood has already been circulated through all the tissues and the organs and all the oxygen's been used up out of it. And so now it's coming back poorly oxygenated to go back to the lungs to pick up some more oxygen so it can be sent out to the body to go through the whole cycle again. So that's why we send the blood out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Well, now it's gotta come back, right? And how does it come back? It comes back through the pulmonary veins, these guys. So blood's going to come through the pulmonary veins. It's going to now enter the left atrium. And then from the left atrium, the blood's going to get uh, shot down or squeezed down or moved down, however you wanna think about it, through the mitral valve, also known as the bicuspid valve. And then it's gonna end up here, which is gonna be, again, our left ventricle. Now through the left ventricle, it's gonna go through the aortic valve. Remember, that was there, that's our aortic valve. And the blood's gonna go out through the aorta. And the aorta brings blood back to the body, everywhere to the body. So when we think about the cycle of blood flow through the heart, the purpose is, right, is to take this poorly oxygenated blood on the right side of our heart, to bring it through to the lungs to pick up oxygen then to bring it back, entering now to the left side of the heart, now that blood is really rich and filled with oxygen. So now we can send that back out to our body. And that's the cycle of blood flow through the heart. Now, back to something that I said initially about why it's important to know this. Not just to know it for the test or just for that class, but you know, uh, for those of you that, that know me, um, it's really important that we are able to have a solid concept, a solid understanding of something. So if you can understand something like this, and this is just a very basic blood flow through the heart, basic for a reason, because this is gonna be your starting point. From here, now you can build bigger ideas and more complex ideas like we spoke about, so that when you do get to class and you do have that question or that scenario or that case study, that asks you, you know, what happens to a patient if they're having right-sided heart failure? Well, now you're able to think about what's going on in the right side of the heart. You know that the blood is coming from the body. You know that the right ventricle is sending blood out to the lungs. So if that mechanism, if that process all of a sudden stopped working effectively, well, now what would suffer? What would happen? Where is the blood gonna go? And it becomes really easy to start to build those critical concepts when you understand the basics such as this, okay? So I'm gonna just erase this again so we can take a look and let's go at one, one more time because now we've seen it a couple times, but let's remember it from memory. So blood entering through the superior and inferior vena cava to the right side of the heart, right? To the right atrium. Remember, this is our poorly oxygenated side of the heart. It's coming from the body, the body that's already used up all the oxygen. Right now it's gonna go down through the tricuspid valve into our right ventricle, and then out through the pulmonary valve or pulmonic valve to through this big pipe here, this is our pulmonary artery, into our right and our left lung. So let's say right lung, left lung. And it's picking up oxygen. And now that it's picked up oxygen, it's gonna come back to the left side of the heart, filled with oxygen, nice and rich blood. So the left side of our heart is oxygen rich. So now it comes back through these pulmonary veins into our left atrium. And now we're gonna go down through our mitral valve or bicuspid valve, land in our left ventricle. And now we can go through our aortic valve, through our aorta, back out to the body to give our body, our tissue, our organs, 
all the oxygen that it needs for consumption and for functioning. So that is the blood flow through the heart. Of course, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. I hope this was helpful to you, especially those that you requested this video. Take care.